what up squad, it's your boy KFlo. And in this video, we're going to be fitting 35s on the Tacoma. Now let's get this thing started. So for those of you guys new to this channel, this channel makes in-depth DIY Toyota Tacoma tutorials for the second gen Toyota Tacoma. So make sure you smash that like and subscribe button, baby. Do it now, guys. Now all the materials and tools that I use in this video will be on my Amazon page. So make sure you check that out at amazon.kflow-crib.com. Now I would suggest that you guys watch my wheel alignment at home video first because that will explain some of the terminologies I use like camber, caster, and toe. So make sure you check that out. I will link that in the description below. Now real quick guys, according to my YouTube analytics, 89.3% of you guys are still not subscribed yet. That's a lot of you guys that watch these videos that are still not subscribed yet. So I think that's you, Mike, John, and Robert. I know you're not subscribed yet, so make sure you smash that like and subscribe button, baby. Really helps the channel out. I'm waiting and I'm watching you. All right, guys, now let's get to the garage. So here's the new wheel and tire combo, guys. Let's roll the B-roll. So these wheels are made by Rock Tricks, and you can find these on my Amazon page actually. Go to amazon.kflow-crib.com. And these tires, the size of these tires are 315, 70, or 17. And these are Pirelli Scorpion All-Terrain Plus. I'm going to be telling you the details as to why I went with this decision as opposed to Mud Terrain, more towards the end of this video. But that is definitely a sexy looking combination, guys. And here's a quick comparison shot between my current wheel and tire setup. These are obviously the stock rims and I do have spacers in order to fit the bigger tires. These are Wrangler Dora Tracks 285, 70, or 17, which are basically 33s. And these new ones are 315, which are obviously uh, closer to 35, but not, not exactly 35 because these measure out to about 34.4 inches. But they do look like a huge difference between the two. So you can see there's much more beef on that bad boy. Here's another shot from further away. And that's how it's going to look. I currently just have it in front of the other tire. And that is definitely to look real sexy. Now I am anticipating rubbing when it comes to installing these tires. So I did already buy SPCs and I'll show you that right now. So these are the SPC upper control arms that I did buy to account for the larger tires. As you can see, these have an adjustable camber setting so you can actually push the tire as far forward as possible. And I'll talk more about that during the installation. But yeah guys, here's the difference in the height. Yeah, that's going to be a big boy in there. All right, guys, so now I'm going to fit these tires and these wheels on the truck with the existing setup. And I do have details on my current suspension setup, and I'll link that in the description below. But to give you guys a quick recap, I do have the cabin mount shop done, and I saw those shop plates on my store, so make sure you check that out at store.kflow-crib.com. I have the Freedom Off-Road Upper Control Arms, and I do have the Dobinson's suspension setup, which is basically the Dobinson shocks with the extra heavy duty coil springs. Alrighty guys, now let's install those new tires and see how they fit with this current suspension setup. Guys, I think I just wet my pants. I have to say, these wheels and tires look amazing. Holy smokes, guys. Let's cue the B-roll on that bad boy. Mm. 
Man, does that look awesome, guys. Jeez. Yeah, you might notice I don't have the camper on there. The camper's sitting on my driver right there for now. And that's what I like about this setup. I can take the camper off and use my truck as a work truck. But man, does that look awesome. So now let's look at the clearances while it's tracking straight. As you can see, this gap here, I could barely fit a finger in there. So she's definitely going to rub right here. I'll have to chop more of this plastic off. And I'll obviously do another check with the tire rotated on both the driver's side and passenger side. So you guys will get a better look at that. Now let's take a look at the back. So here at the back, I was already rubbing before with the 33s and I do have to trim that as you can see it pried up. And between here, I mean that's that's probably about three fingers, two. I mean, I'll take you to the other side so you can see better look where the other side's not really rubbing so much. But yeah, I'll definitely have to chop parts of this plastic rear fender off. So here's the opposite side. I mean. I can fit probably about two fingers pretty snug and that's probably about a couple inch on the front and this is about three fingers at the rear so that's a little bit more on the rear side of the, the rear wheels here. So I'll definitely have to chop parts of the rear as well. Alright guys so now I'm going to rotate those wheels so we can see the clearances at the cabin and at that front bumper. She's already touching the plastic, guys. And now she's touching the cabin mount. Let's take a look at it from underneath. All right, guys, as you can see right there, the tire is now touching the cabin mount. So we definitely have to push that caster as far forward as we can. So it looks like at the front side at the bumper, looks like there's plenty of clearances. So I'm not gonna worry about chopping off this front bumper, but we're good there. Alrighty guys, back at the workbench and I'm going to be explaining my strategy to get this thing to fit much better. And I'm going to be using this SPC. This one is for the passenger side and I'll be using this for the explanation. So this is the passenger side and the front of the truck will be to the right, the rear will be to the left. So the plan would be the SPCs have adjustable caster and this allows the spindle to be pretty much pushed forward by about an extra inch, inch and a half. And that should hopefully give me enough clearance to clear the cabin mounts. I'm not going to be going over the thorough detail of installing upper control arms because I've already made that video. But I am going to explain to you how the adjustability works on this SPC upper control arm system. Alright guys, so for SPCs, we have the adjustability with the caster. And this allows you to pretty much bring that spindle forward in order to clear the cabin mount. The way this whole thing is assembled is we actually have this washer here. There's several notches here to allow the ball joint to be positioned at seven total intervals. So we can have a position there or we can rotate it backwards so it's pushed further back. So for this, I'm going to have it pushed all the way forward like that. This is square so that it fits at the square of the bottom portion of the SPC. So it goes just like that. And what's also nice is this still rides on the slot and this allows you to adjust pretty much the camber as well. So we have the adjustability with the caster and we also have the extra adjustability with this camber. So it's a beautiful thing. And when I assemble this, I am going to put anti-seize between uh, this surface and this washer here. But I'm not going to put any anti-seize on this surface to the upper control arm itself because I still do want some friction in order to keep this thing from shifting while I'm driving. And I do want this to be released easily from this ball joint if I do want to make an adjustment. That's why I still do want to put 
anti-seize on this surface to this washer. So this is the spindle pushed as far forward as possible. And if we want it pushed backwards, we just turn it around. Then this washer goes on top. And then this nut goes on top of that. So I'll just snug it down by hand for now. One hour later. Alrighty guys, so we are here back on the driver's side. As you can see, this ball joint is pushed forward. So we have this spindle pretty much pushed forward, which should push the tire forward as well. And now what I mean by adjustable in the camber, I'm going to loosen this upper bolt here. You can see this thing can still ride on this slot. And when you tighten it, we can get the camber adjusted properly in that sense. So that's why these SPC upper control arms are awesome. But as you can see, I still do need to tighten up several bolts there. This ABS line isn't secured yet and the sway bar is still there. And I still haven't torqued down this upper control arm yet either. So I'm going to do that now and I'll show you guys what it looks like. A few moments later. Alright guys. So those are the SPCs fully installed. And man. Does that look sexy having new upper control arms like that? So now I'm going to do is basically do a preliminary interference test and I'll do that by I'll jack up the lower control arm here so that we're pretty much putting most of the weight of the front end on this driver's side wheel. And I'll do the same on the passenger side wheel so you guys can see the difference between the left and right side of the truck and how the interference is. Alright guys, so as you can see from the shot, the truck is off of the driver's side jack stand. Oh yeah guys, looks like we cleared it. Here's the shot from underneath and I'm gonna rotate the tire by hand so you guys can see how much clearance we have. So this is at full lock right here. As you can see, we still have some clearance. Yeah, it looks like this might be the point where it's close to the cabin mount. And I'll take out a tape measure so you guys can see how close it really is. Uh, so right there is probably about 5 sixteenths of an inch of clearance. And this is with the weight of the truck on this driver's side. And as you can see from this shot, there's plenty of clearance at the front. See that? Probably about four fingers width. So, it's pretty nice. Now, same thing on the passenger side, guys. I put the weight on the lower control arm. Took the weight off this jack stand. I'll move it so you guys can really see it. See? There's no weight on this passenger side jack stand there. And here's the cabin mount on the passenger side oh yeah cleared that too probably about the same amount of, uh, of actually a little bit more let's take out the tape measure I think this is the closest point and this is a full lock right here so right there we probably have about 5 16th worth of clearance between the tire and the cabin mount and this is with the weight of the truck the front end of the truck on the passenger side so the trucks back on the ground guys I just want to point out so I'm about to start doing the rough alignment I just want to point out that this nut here for adjusting the camber this has to be torqued down 150 foot-pounds if you are going to do the alignment yourself 
And if you do want to do it at home, I do have a DIY alignment on how you can do that in your own garage. So I'll link that in the description below. All right guys, as you can see, this is flat ground. And that's the clearance right there. Probably about a quarter of an inch. I'll take out the tape measure so you can see. All right, hopefully you can see that guys. That's quarter of an inch clearance, flat ground, full lock. Passenger side clearance, just about the same. Quarter inch, full lock. So that's still pretty good. So now we're going to do this test. I'm basically just gonna use Rhino ramps for now. And these are probably the highest ramps that I have. And go up this ramp on just the passenger side at full wheel lock. So I'll show you guys that and see the results. This is pretty much to simulate off camber driving. Pretty much just lifting it from the bottom of the tires as opposed to the lower control arm. So let's do this. So there's the gap guys. I'll take out the tape measure so we can take a quick look. So as you can see right there, the gap is about a quarter of an inch. So this one's the driver's side at full lock. Yeah, and this side is really close. I'll take out a tape measure so you guys can see. So yeah, that's really tight in there guys. I think this one is about a, an eighth of an inch. So yeah guys, right there it, it is almost touching. And if I do a little bit more hardcore crawling, that will definitely rub. But for now, I think it's good. Not touching yet, and I have just enough clearance so I can still drive it around the highways, a little bit of off-road driving, but probably no hard crawling. So as you can see guys, we can definitely fit 35s using the existing cabin mount shop and just swapping out the upper control arms. And I mean, there are definitely other ways you can tackle that you can fit 35s. For example, you can do the cabin mount relocation or a six inch lift, or the Marlin Crawler RCHD suspension system. But all these other examples are definitely much more intensive in terms of work because it will require cutting and welding into the frame and much more expensive in terms of the cost. Because for example, that Marlin Crawler RCHD suspension system advertises that you can use the existing cabin mount without having to use the chop and also still fit 35s because what it does is it moves the caster forward about two inches for both the upper and lower control arms. But the cost of this RCHD suspension system is about $10,000 I believe from when I last checked the website. So it's definitely a badass suspension system but it also costs a lot of money. So as I mentioned guys, I don't do any hardcore rock crawling, so this setup is okay to me for now. But when I do get to that point, I will be exploring these other options. Now let's talk about wheels and tires, guys. These specific wheels and tires will be on my Amazon page, so make sure you check that out at amazon.kflow-crib.com. Now these wheels are 17 by 9 with a negative 12 millimeter offset, and the bolt pattern is a 6 by 5.5 inch bolt pattern. Now it's important to keep these wheel specs in mind guys because when you're purchasing wheels that negative 12 millimeter offset is what prevents you from having to use spacers. So I did all my research as much as I can so I can fit these 315s with this wheel setup and without rubbing and without having to use wheel spacers. Now I was torn between buying these Rock Tricks and the Black Rhino Arsenal wheels because those wheels are also gorgeous. So I went with the Rock Tricks because they were definitely gorgeous and solid wheels without breaking the bank. So now if we do a quick cost comparison, these Black Rhino Arsenal wheels are about $265 while the Rock Tricks is about $1.50. So that's a cost difference of about $115 per wheel. And if you buy a set of five, that's about a $575 cost difference. Now I went with all terrains versus mud terrains for a few specific reasons to me obviously. So number one is most of my adventures is basically cross country trips. So I've driven to Florida, I've driven to Vermont and I do need good tires for the highway. 
all terrains are definitely much better on the highway and they definitely have a much better tread life than mud terrains on average. So my second reason guys is that my truck runs heavy. I have that four wheel camper in the back. So that means I need really good traction to stay in control of my truck. So that's stopping, going and turning. And I know all terrains do that much better than mud terrains, especially in wet conditions. I've been a passenger in my brother's Land Cruiser which has mud terrains and what's raining and it's pouring out and it's pretty much driving on very wet asphalt. The traction is very very iffy and you just feel pretty much scared when you're driving in mud terrains and heavy rain on asphalt. So that's what I wanted to avoid because driving on the highway especially for cross country road trips the weather is obviously unpredictable and I'll have to be prepared for downpour, snow and any type of wet driving conditions. And guys, my third reason is road noise. When you're driving cross country, keeping road noise down is definitely going to make your driving much more comfortable. And if you're going to be choosing all terrains, it's definitely much quieter as opposed to mud terrains. So now let's talk about the tire size comparison because I'm talking about 315s versus 35s and what is the exact size of 315s. So if we use tiresize.com slash calculator, 315 70 R17 is actually only a 34.4 inch tire, which is only a 1.6 inch difference in diameter. So now let's talk about the cost calculation using Discount Tire Direct as our baseline. So I went into discounttiredirect.com and set up a filter for 31570 R17 tires and then sorted it by cost where the lowest cost 315 tires are up top pretty much ascending order from cheapest to most expensive. So the cheapest three tires average to about $231 and I pretty much did the same analysis for the 35s and the cheapest three tires average to about $276. Definitely try this for yourself guys when you're shopping around for tires. And if you took the math and did a cost difference, you're probably gonna average about a $45 difference per tire purchase. Now for a set of five tires, that will be probably about a $225 cost average difference between 315s and 35s. So let's think about it. Is 1.6% bigger diameter worth the extra 200 plus dollars? So hopefully that helps you with making your decision with 315s versus 35s. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't yet, make sure you smash that like, subscribe, and hit that bell too while you're at it. Until next time, peace.